everyone this is abhishruti here a 13 year old teenager from kolkata and hosting my first ever live podcast i'm thankful to bukosmia for giving me this amazing opportunity and such a huge platform to express myself with no restrictions well the name of my podcast here is a little greekish and as the name suggests We are going to talk about the fun facts and juicy tales of Greek mythology. An interesting subject to talk about, isn't it? With never-ending fancy stories and gossips. Well, the Greeks happen to have a foregoing connection with mythology and folklore from like time immemorial. Anyways, we will be digging deeper into the subject in a while. But before that, Let me introduce my fabulous panelists here. Janvi Mishra, 14 year old from Kolkata and the main reason behind my Greek mania. She is an avid reader of fiction and mythology and loves trying out new things. My next panelist is Bhuvi Daga from Kolkata, a 14 year old folk and needless to say another mythology expert. She is practically the Greek head who influenced me to podcast this topic today. Then I have Archana Ma'am as my co-host. I know I'm trying your patience with my blabbering, but wait up. We'll be diving straight into the topic. I would like to invite my guests to open the conversation with a few words from their side. Yes, Janvi, over to you. Hello everyone I'm Janvi from Kolkata and I'd love to thank my host Abhishruti for having me here I'm so excited to be spending this wonderful evening chatting away with my friends on my all time favorite topic Greek mythology Yeah yeah Janvi absolutely I totally agree with you because I too love Greek mythology as much as you do and I'm sure many of our guests here do too Well anyway hey guys i am bhuvi from kolkata and picking up on what abhishuti said i do feel that greek and mythology has some pre uh, preceding connections you know like i don't feel my pano fellow panelists would disagree with me much if i am to say that greek mythology is one of the oldest mythologies in the world oh yes of course bhuvi you're absolutely right Greek mythology really is one of the oldest mythologies in the world and it has quite complex yet interesting origins which brings us to the fact that what exactly are the interesting facts of Greek mythology we shall begin with our podcast very soon but let us just hold on for a couple of seconds for our guests to join in sure sure And yes do feel free to write down your thoughts in the comment box below after all we do want to know if there are still some greek heads out there so we can just flock together what do you say bhuvi yeah cool sure Okay so i guess everyone has joined in more or less so we can start our podcast now for those who got stuck at an online network jam and joined in a teeny bit late let me tell you today we are going to talk about greek mythology and its significance in almost all ways so i would love our greek mythology expert janvi to do the honors yes janvi carry on 
थैंक्स फॉर ग्रेसिंग मी विथ सच एन ऑन अभिश्रुति ये गाइज ग्रीक मेथोलॉजी इज इन इट सेल्फ फैसिनेटिंग बट सम फन फैक्ट अबाउट दैम मेक्स इट एब्सोल्यूटली एन ग्रॉसिंग एंड समटाइम्स हिलेरियस टू वेल अकॉर्डिंग टू द मिथ्स जियस डिस्पाइट बींग द यंगेस्ट बिकेम द रूलर ऑफ द अर्थ एंड स्काय एंड पोसाइडन कट द सी एंड हेर इज द अंडरवर्ल्ड पुअ गाय हेर इज rules the depths of darkness don't feel too sorry for the lord of underworld because even though normal people like us may frown over his job it is often noted that he is quite happy with his job and he enjoys it the most by the way what happened to those terif- terrifying twin giants tell us that story terrifying oh well yeah if you're talking about ephiols and otis then that is the perfect word to describe them for sure but they did claim to be menacing though at least the gods thought so for a while at least yeah two of the most fearsome and stupid giants whom the gods faced against were the brothers ephiols and otis they were ultimately defeated by trickery artemis the goddess of the hunt and also the twin sister of apollo offered herself to otis as a reward which made his brother envious as they two argued artemis jumped between them disguised as a doe the two giants were distracted and threw their spears at the doe but artemis dodged clever girl isn't she and each of the brothers got killed by each other's spears making for a pretty embarrassing story to tell down in tartarus hmm well then we come to know that wisdom is the key to success talking about wisdom did you guys know that athena the goddess of wisdom and courage and despite being the daughter of the most powerful god zeus she was afraid of being defeated oh cool stuff but guys why don't we play something good idea but what do we play oh well how about name the fame but before that here i see in the comments section ashna ma'am has a question Why does Hades enjoy the underworld? Is there a back story to how he ended up there? Oh yes, of course, there is one. And um, Janvi or Bhuvi, you want to share anything? Oh yes, I would love to take up this question. Um, ah, uh, since the three gods are essentially huge gods, we often overlook their personalities. and uh, it's often overlooked that when the earth was when the entire world was divided into three for them each of their reign suited their um, personality zeus uh, zeus got the earth and the sky because he had natural leadership instincts and he always wanted to be a leader hades got the underworld because he had a, a certain fascination with death this is the reason that he was uh, stuck in the underworld as you like to call it that was cool bhuvi that was really cool and now about the game i was just asking do you want to play name the fame excellent i'm in it sounds so much fun yeah me too Okay then let me just introduce the game to those who don't know I will name a god or goddess in their greek form and you all will have to guess their roman names and i would request my guests and listeners to type their guesses in the comment box below so shall we begin oh yeah certainly awesome and I would again like to ask all my guests please type down in the comment box below and it's only a guessing game okay go so be no heads what's the right nice 
Okay, so the first one is okay. Hephaestus. Let's see how many of you can get it right. What is the Roman form of Hephaestus? Any guesses? Well, Abhishuti, it seems our readers do not have any idea what we're talking about. So I'm just going to help everyone with the first one. The Roman form of Hephaestus is Vulcan. Well, they should also know then that what Hephaestus does really, you know, the god of what thing? Hephaestus is often known as the god of fire. He is... Uh, he makes a lot of weapons that are related with fire as well. So, yeah. Isn't he also the god of blacksmiths? Uh, that doesn't necessarily the old text say. Uh, that is a new name given to him because uh, the fire because because he's the fire god. He, he is often also known for making a lot of weapons for his uh, brother Ares to use. So that's why um, that's why he is also called a blacksmith, god of blacksmith. Oh yes, Hephaestus is definitely seen making weapons and arms for his brothers and the gods. No wonder, and Ares being so violent, gods. If Hephaestus did not make any weapons, maybe Ares would have strangled him to death. But Abhishruti, I'm a little disappointed. Our guests here are not commenting in the comment box. How do we know if we should continue? Okay, let's give them some time. So the next one is easy. The next one is Persephone. This one's easy. Come on, Greek heads, I know you've got it. Why don't you give any hints? It's fine with a little help, right? Well, the hint can be it matches with the real name. It definitely yeah, okay. matches with the it's real name. And another real? hint can be it sounds a lot like porcupine. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to say that. No, it's not destruction actually. Destruction. Because Persephone is like. Yeah, Persephone was like the daughter of. She was like the goddess of spring and all. So, no bad omen or destruction. She was the dot, like spring goddess. So, no destruction. It's good. Okay, so why? Well, yes, we have already gotten a right answer. Oh, great! Oh, uh, well, it's Proserpine. Okay, quite right. Well, maybe it was a typo. Yeah, can be. Or maybe Hecate is messing with us again. Hecate is the goddess of this magic, right? Black magic. Yes. Well, I'd say Iris is messing with us because she is the goddess of messages and communication, isn't she? Yeah, Janvi, that really makes a lot more sense. The third one is another easy one. It's Dionysus. The clue here can be that the name that Dionysus is a god of... is He's basically the god of wine. He used to be a very powerful demigod. But then he lost his way to drinking, so the gods named him the god of wine. Seriously, the Greek gods are, you know, like the Greeks have made gods and goddesses for everything, like every single thing in this universe. Come on, 
Come on, Greek heads, we are waiting. I hope not. I don't want the Greek gods to watch this. Okay, the answer is batches. Now the fourth one is Demeter. Okay, okay, I'll give a hint. Since Demeter is the goddess of food, the hint here for her Roman name can be cereal. It matches a lot with the word cereal. The cereal we have for breakfast. And it also has something to do with Netflix. Like it's matching, you know, a lot. We've got the right answer. Oh, yeah. Riva is correct. I'm sorry for a wrong pronunciation, but yeah, it is series. Let's continue, Bishuti. I can't wait. Okay, the next one is Eros. Eros. Okay, this is a very interesting one. So, I uh, there is a like a very simple clue to this. This is a flying baby in a diaper that hands out arrows on Valentine's Day. We've got the right answer again from Riva. And from another yeah, one too. Stupid. And you know we get the word erotic. From the name of Eros. Okay, the next one is Artemis. Okay, you know, I'm going to drop in a little clue here. For everyone who's watched The Princess Diaries, the main character here, uh, yeah, so she is going to come into a uh, lot of use during this. Her first name is also the Roman name of the. Apartamus. Yeah, absolutely. You've kind of given the answer already, Booby. It is. Yes, because the it? right answer is yeah. Anandita. Anandita. It's absolutely right. And the last one for this game is Poseidon. This is oh, easy this because is, this is the name, name of a planet. Of a planet. Come on, guys. I know y'all can do it. name of a planet that's blue and color. Let's never forget the colors. They are important. Oh, blue. My favorite color. Come on, guys. Let me know in the comment box who loves the color blue. Blue army. Here we go. Oh, yes. Arshna ma'am is right. It's Neptune. Okay, so I guess the game is over now with the right answers. Yeah, even Riva is right. It's Neptune. Guys, talking about Greek mythology, how can we not talk about the legendary, perfect, awesome, beautiful, lovely books written by Rick Riordan? All hail Percy Jackson. Oh, yeah, that was kind of exaggeration, you know. But, yeah, you're right, Janvi. Those are like the trending books in the recent times. Is it not? What's it, Bhuvi? Oh, I just, I cannot tell you more, uh, give you more praise about Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson is a must read for every kid, every single kid who feels lonely and uh, misplaced by the world. Every kid who loves fantasy and loves escaping the real world. It just engrosses you and it just pulls you in for a lot of magic and drama and romance and it's amazing. So yeah. Thank you, Bhuvi. Uh, now, Janvi, you want to say anything without exaggerating? Okay. Absolutely. How would you expect me to not say anything about Percy Jackson? Percy Jackson is a Greek mythology reimagined. It's not just a storybook. 
It's an incredible way to learn a little history while having the time of your lives with Percy, Annabeth, Grover and Tyson. It's also so much more, an incredible story about friendship and family. Between all the action, magic and riddles, it's a truly heartwarming story about finding friends who eventually become family and houses that become home. Thank you so much, Janvi. That was awesome. And yeah, I'm also a Greek mythology fan as well as Percy Jackson fan too. So, well, if you ask me, guys, about my personal favorite, then I would say I like the Percy Jackson series better than the Heroes of Olympus series. If I could just Pick cut in here, know, um, I have a question to ask you, Arundhati. Sorry, Abhishuti. I had heard from someone that you at first absolutely hated the character Percy Jackson. Credit yourself, Bhuvi, for making me falling in love with that character. Bad luck, you know, because he already has Annabeth. And we would all be heartbroken if they ever broke up. No one would even think of that. So, anyway, for those who don't know about the Heroes of Olympus, Janvi, you would like to say anything? It's also an amazing series. I think Janvi is facing some sort of technical issue, so I would like to take you up on that. Sure, uh, movie. Yeah, the Heroes of Lampa series is more into when Percy is slowly becoming a teenager. It's like he is a teenager even in the Percy Jackson series, but he's often portrayed as a 12-year-old kid who knows nothing. Soon as we progress into the Heroes of Lampa series, we see him maturing and realizing the depth of his true powers and his abilities. We also see a lot of emotional connection with new characters. And I feel that Heroes of Olympus is more for kids my age. Uh, I'm 14 right now. So they're more for kids who are 13, 14. And whereas the Percy Jackson series is more for 10-year-olds or 11-year-olds. Since, you know, even Percy is 12 as he embarks on his epic journey in Percy Jackson. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that review, Bhuvi. Well, personally, I like the Percy Jackson series better than the Heroes of Olympus series. You know why? Uh, because you see, like Rick Riordan is doubtlessly a remarkable author, but I feel that Percy Jackson books have more of Percy in it, while in the Heroes of Olympus, there are so many characters that Percy seems so downtrodden. You know, well, it is my opinion anyways. It differs for everyone else. But I have this one question on my mind which has been bugging me since like forever and here it is. Which one do you think is better in your view? Romans or Greeks? I would like to hear from Janvi first and dear listeners, please not feel shy to type down your thoughts in the comment box. Yeah, Janvi, over to you. Thank you, Vishruti. I choose Romans. Even beside my love for Percy, I'll have to choose Romans because Romans are very brave and they are politically intelligent people. We see most of the emperors or politically intelligent people were from Rome. And for instance, Mark Anthony and of course, we've already read about Caesar. While those are all amazingly valid points, I believe I will side with Greeks because I have never been one to follow rules. If someone gives me a set of rules, I am going to sit there and make opposite rules for myself because I hate being told what to do and I feel that my personality really resonates with the Greeks. The Greeks uh, never follow rules, that's definitely for sure, but they also have a sense of togetherness, a sense of friendship. It's like if you're a soldier in Greek ranks, you're not a soldier. You are surrounded by a group of people who will 
try their best to save you under any circumstances even if it is not that fatal they will try their best to make sure that you are perfectly fine there are so many instances when people who hate other people in the greek uh, armies would give up their life because they are greek soldiers and because they are family they treat each and every one of them like family so i will forever be with the greeks but i mean no disrespect to the people who uh, choose romans oh come on romans are very organized and unlike the greeks who mostly make up with the enthusiasm but have no order whatsoever the greeks tried to reach up to the mark in their own jolly slow way but the romans are always in discipline how can you even reach your destination without discipline um sure 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 those are again valid points and everything and yeah romans are more organized and everything but i must say even though the greeks are chaotic as hell they are amazing and they always make it up like if you ever anything happens and you know the greeks will always make sure that they win but as much as imp- as much as winning is important to them they need to make sure that each and every one of their fellow um soldiers make it out alive they need to make sure that you know they are uh, that everyone is safe and that's what i like more about them because they're family they're not um you know they're not just soldiers they're not just strays all banded together so yeah. now that you bring family in let's just look forward to the respect side oh my god see the respect romans have for their gods but for the greeks it's just like a daily visit one stroll and you reach the gods and you talk to them like your family please respect the gods like the romans do such disciplined okay okay as amazingly invalid as this point is i feel as if the greeks are as if the gods are the family i mean each and every person who can stroll into mount olympus is a demigod right and demigods are kids of the gods so i think they deserve the respect and attention from their parents as well and romans i would at any point say that the greeks have only like before percy jackson they had rarely some strong demigods but the romans they are trained very brave from the from their birth like you know they are trained by the wolves and lupa so you you know that they are brave from their birth but the greeks they don't have any training they are just pulled up and brought into the camp where in the camp they receive training from the uh, from chiron and i would just like to end my point with this um, with this one line in all chaos there is a cosmos in all disorders there is a secret door and secret order so you know just Okay okay gods now guys cool down i guess you all took it a bit too seriously so one more fun question i don't think that you all will take it any more you know in a fun manner because my gods i just witnessed what i didn't want to and okay anyways if you had to choose a favorite character from the percy jackson and heroes of olympus series then who would it be and why apart from percy okay well mine is jason he's like that person thinking of whom you will have this gilbert blight type feeling for all those who have read anne of green gables will understand like jason is the absolute sweetheart and also he's really helpful and does not pride himself or boast being super strong and stuff so yeah he is my favorite character due to that reason What about you Bhuvi? Um I would like to go with Nico D'Angelo, okay? And he just brings out a sort of hope in me. He has gone through incredibly tough times and he is still so strong and he has made it through it. Uh I want to applaud him for that. And secondly, 
his personality can someone please stand up here and just you know help me out here because i am falling short of words to describe about how much i love his personality and i swear if i could mimic his personality i would but i'm afraid i've never had the gift to mimic a person's personality but hats off to nico for being raised under dire circumstances and still coming out so amazing and angelic and pure well oh god that was great that was just great and now janvi well now because bhuvi already spoke about nico i think i'll speak okay wait i'll let you guess who i'm speaking about my favorite besides percy is obviously nobody let me know in the comments if you get the reference jokes is part my favorite besides percy is annabeth not because she's just beautiful and blonde but because she has been developed as a beautiful independent flawed young woman who taught people that brains were a superpower too literature has strived to give us a good female role model that has flaws and makes numerous mistakes while still striving to be the best she can be and rick riordan gave us annabeth she is a girl who struggles to prove her intelligence annabeth was one of the first characters that told people that you didn't need to be a super pretty she is beautiful sure but she's also strong and a force to be reckoned with that was amazing and mind blowing and that's you know also uh, cheer up or you know like a kind of motivation for us girls because all of us like mostly all of us are girls here and also you know since my favorite character is jason i also had to face some hilarious situations like uh, you know there are many people whose name is jason like my cousin's best friend his name is jason so whenever we are talking like my cousin and me and he's just sitting beside us and this topic of percy jackson or heroes of olympus comes up and if i pass a comment on jason for example if i say like he's so cool like jason is so cool and then you know like that jason my cousin's best friend will be staring at me in with an expression you know like what are you saying so every time i have to uh, specify that no not you it's book jason and it's awkward and weird every time you're telling it it's book jason so yeah there are some hilarious and awkward situations i have to face because my favorite character is jason like percy yeah i know percy is also a very common name but still like this one is hilarious have you all any ever faced this kind of situation i'm glad i don't have to face Anyone? this kind of situation because every friend i ever talk to knows what i'm talking about uh, yeah. i would like to address a Good comment written by um reva i think if i'm uh, pronouncing your name wrong please feel free to correct me okay so yeah uh, she just brought up the uh, brought up a point about anabeth that janvi had said and therefore i would just like to read out one of my favorite anabeth quotes to her you know just like because we are all anabeth fans here who are we kidding even strength has to bow down to wisdom sometimes this dialogue has been proven by anabeth multiple times during the series and so yeah i would just love to mention at once also also the i'm nobody sidekick one or oh, she is never the sidekick i believe that would be percy even though he is the man on the book sure sure obviously well well i guess it's time to wind up now it was a fun chat though and janvi and bhuvi did an amazing job it was a lovely evening and amazing comments in the comment section okay then i end the podcast today by thanking my guests and listeners and a quick closing remark from my buddies yes janvi yes bro thank you so much i loved and enjoyed the evening so much it was just awesome spending time with some greek heads out there over to you bhuvi um uh, yes 
I would just like to thank Abhi Shruti for inviting me and I loved the event and it was such an excellent and fun fun time chatting along with y'all. So thank you. I loved it. Thank you guys.